Happy Sabbath, everybody. It's such a joy to finally stand behind this pulpit again. Even if it's one person only, uh, I want to relish this moment. Almost one year ago, over one year ago, we were back at church. We left church and... And it's just such a good feeling to be able to stand and deliver the word rather than sit. I want to take this opportunity to uh, welcome all of you who have been joining us over the past couple of months. We want you to know that you are a very dear part of the Wilson family. And uh, we trust that you will continue to join us from wherever you are. Uh, because um, we are now trying to transition back into church, we want to make sure that you transition with us. So uh, take the opportunity now and uh, uh, share the link, extend an invitation to everyone. And uh, particularly, it's good to see some familiar faces this morning. Uh, it's really good that we can meet together, though, uh, though restricted in number, we are still here. And uh, what a joy it is we can begin our worship with communion service today. Before I, I share with you our challenge for today, I want to take this opportunity on behalf of uh, Brother Sean and Jordan, Jordan Carter to share their joy with you. Uh, Sean and Jordan have asked me to let you know that God has blessed them with little Sebastian Leo Edemi Carter. So on behalf of the church family, we would like to say congratulations to you, uh, Sean and Jordan. We certainly celebrate with you. And uh, they, will, they asked me to say a special thank you on their behalf to uh, Sister Carlin, Carlene Blake, as she was the midwife that was instrumental in bringing little Sebastian into this world. Um, so, Sean and Jordan, congratulations and welcome into the world of joys. And, uh, you know, just the, tr the sheer thrill of being a parent. Uh, we want you to know that our prayers and support are with you as a church family. This morning, as we have come together, Communion service reminds us that Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Sin has left the crimson stain. We wash, he wash, white as snow. Now you'll have to forgive me for having you here and not being able to hear amen. Amen. I know that we cannot sing, but folks, we have to pray that this changes soon, uh, that we'll be able to sing and say amen to a struggling preacher. <laughs> Philippians chapter 3, my thoughts for meditation this morning. Philippians chapter 3, I want to read from verse 4 in your hearing. Though I myself have reason for confidence in the flesh, if anyone else think he has reason for confidence, I have more circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. 
But whatever gain I had, I counted it as loss for the sake of Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss. I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things and count them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ. Some versions say dung. And being found in him, not having a righteousness of my own, that comes from the law, but that which comes through faith in Jesus, the righteousness from God that depends on faith, that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, and may share in his sufferings, becoming like unto him in his death. The apostle Paul, sitting in a Roman jail. He is now looking back on his life. And there he reminisces on what he had. He reminisces on what he gave up. And as he reflected on his life, he recognized that he had every reason for confidence. He had every reason to boast. In fact, the Apostle Paul says, if anyone had reason for confidence in the flesh, it is I. You see, folks, the flesh here does not refer to the base immoral side of life. The flesh here refers to the worst and the best of humankind. Paul said, when I look at my life, when I look back over my life, if anyone has reason to boast, it is I. You see, folks, Paul probably was thinking like a good businessman who implemented or adopted a new method of bookkeeping. And now he is about to reflect how has it worked? And he recognized that his system of bookkeeping, his system of accounting, if you please, fell flat on his face when he came face to face with Jesus. You see, it was on the road of Damascus that Paul met Jesus. And there, his accounting system stalled. There, he recognized that the whole system of personal and spiritual accountancy broke down. And when he accumulated and tabulated all his human accomplishment, he recognized that it was rubbish. You see, folks, Paul declared, whatever I gained, Whatever I gained, and he gained a lot. You see, folks, Paul had special advantages. In verse 5 of Philippians chapter 3, he tells us he was circumcised on the eighth day. He had, he had every advantage possible to human being. He came from the tribe of Benjamin. That's where the first king of Israel came from. Paul had natural advantages. He had ecclesiastical advantage. Paul came from the very stock of Abraham. Paul had good pedigree. Paul, yes, he went to the best school, if you please. He sat at the field of Gamaliel. Paul was a doctor of the law if you please he knew the bible from cover to cover he was he was on par to be the leader of the jewish religion and as he looked back at his life he recognized it was all rubbish you see folks no matter what you accomplish in this life 
when you put it in the face of Jesus, it comes to nothing. All the wealth, all the fame, all the assets, all the clothes, all that you have, when you put it next to Jesus, it looks like nothing. Paul said, despite what I've accomplished, despite the pedigree I've brought behind me, yes, even my spiritual and religiosity, even that, what I recognize is that when I put it next to Jesus, it amounted to nothing. And so folks, communion service reminds us that we have nothing. We have nothing. We may look as if we have something. But when you put it in the face and in the light of the cross, you recognize that all human accomplishment, all that we ever hope to be, when we put it next to Jesus, it comes to nothing. You see, folks, Paul says, Whatever I have gained, whatever, all that I've gained, I count it as loss. Now, those are business terminologies. Paul counted everything as loss. And in the place of human loss stands Christ. You see, folks, Christ can only stand prominent when you stand deficient. The glory of Christ can only be seen when human accomplishment falls to nothing. Paul had to be reduced to nada, to zero. Paul had to be reduced to nothing so that the real hero can be seen. When it comes to all that you have accomplished, Paul said, I count it all lost. You see, folks, when the accountant eye travels down through the list and the sum talk is reckoned, the line is drawn beneath a completed sum. The answer is an com- uncompromising single word. You've made a loss. All that has been said, there is nothing less. There is nothing more. All your efforts, everything. There is no ground for confidence. You have had a loss. Christians in the plan of God, we, our mathematical conundrum is that we will always be losing. In the realm of human flesh, when it comes to Christ, we stand at a loss. But folks, I've got news for you this morning that while you stand at a loss in the place of Christ, you have everything to gain. And the cross reminds us that everything that we are, we owe it to shame. We owe it to embarrassment. The cross was the greatest scandal in the Christian history. But folks, that is what Christ does. He takes that which we don't like and he makes it that which we need. The cross, if you please, becomes our hope. Paul looks at everything that he's accomplished and he concludes, whatever I have gained, I counted loss for the surpassing worth of knowing Christ. Folks, I want you to know this morning that every communion service reminds us that thanks to Calvary, we don't have to live the life we lived before. Thanks to Calvary, it doesn't matter if all you accomplish in this life is a thank you, Lordy. It doesn't matter if you live in a two by four or a little shack somewhere. It doesn't matter if you die a pauper in this life. Thanks to Calvary, you can gain in eternity. 
And communion service reminds us that there is more to this life than what you have materially. There is more to this life than what you have in the flesh. Because the communion service reminds us that Christ has prepared and he has made it possible that everyone, everyone can finish this race satisfied. And so I want to leave with you four points today. Four points that every communion service reminds us. And then I'll take my seat. Paul says, I count everything lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, Jesus. For his sake I have suffered the loss of all things and count them rubbish that I may gain Christ. And being found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which comes from faith in Jesus. Every communion service reminds us that our satisfaction is found in Jesus. Paul has just portrayed that Jesus Christ has an all-sufficient wealth in Christ. When you are in Christ, you are rich. When you are in Christ, you make a profit. When you are in Christ, there is only gain. You see, folks, a man who is outside of Christ, if he dies one day, his day of reckoning will come. When you are in Christ, not even death can destroy you. Because the Bible said that one day the dead in Christ shall rise. Communion service reminds us that our satisfaction is found in Christ. This means to any chance observer coming from any time, the Lord, the Lord shows us that our satisfaction must come by the fact that you are in Christ. The Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Behold, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When you are in Christ, brothers and sisters, you are a great gain. Communion service reminds us that your greatest asset in this life is not what you've accumulated in life. Your greatest asset is your possession of Christ. When you have Jesus, you have everything. And even though we have been through the storms in this pandemic, even though we have lost many, even though we have been battered and bruised, when you are in Christ, not even a pandemic can get you distracted. When you are in Christ, not even the storms of life can get you derailed. When you are in Christ, he is your shelter in the time of the storm. When you are in Christ, you can sing the song, the Lord's my rock. In him we hide a shelter in the time of the storm. When you are in Christ, you can walk through the valley of the shadow of death. When you are in Christ, he keeps you in the shelter of the storm. Brothers and sisters, this morning, I am so happy that we are in Christ. And every communion service serves to remind us that Christ is all and in all. He is our all-sufficiency. He is all that we need. It reminds us that if you have God on your side, you are a majority. Thank God this morning, Paul said, I count it all loss that I may gain Christ. Communion service reminds us that the righteousness we have does not belong to us. Christ makes us righteous and that's why you don't have to be so concerned about your past. Every communion service is an opportunity to start afresh. 
It doesn't matter how much time you have fallen. Every communion service gives you an opportunity to get back up again. To get back up again. The saint is only a sinner who falls down but gets back up again. Communion service reminds us you don't have to stay down. Get back up again. Though you might be buffeted by sin and temptation, get back up again. Though you may have gone off rail, though you may have wandered away from the Lord, communion service reminds us you can get back up again. Get back up again because the righteousness you have does not come from you. It is Christ who makes you righteous. And hence, every communion service reminds us it's not about you and what you've done. It's about what Christ can do through you. Communion service also reminds us that Christ wants us to be like him. Paul says that I may know him. This knowing is an intimate connection with God. God wants you to become transformed into his image. Every communion service is an opportunity for me to reflect on my walk with the Lord. God wants us to know him. He wants to get to know you personally. He wants to get to know you intimately. That's the relationship that God wants. Folks, this morning, I want you to know that our goal in life is to know Jesus. And every communion service reminds us that God wants to know you. He wants you to know him. He wants you to know the power of his resurrection. You see, folks, death does not have the final answer. The resurrection is the final answer. Communion service reminds us that we are serving a God who was dead. But he broke the chains of death. And because of that, one day, you and I, we too will be victorious over death. And so every communion service, we look back at where we've come from, but we look forward to that glorious resurrection. God wants us to know him. He wants us to know that he has power to do the impossible. He has power to do that which we cannot do in our own. He wants us to know that there is power in his resurrection, but there is also power in his sufferings. You see, folks, the Christian life is a life of suffering. And you know, suffering is not a sign of weakness. Suffering is a sign of strength. You see, folks, the devil never interferes with those who are his. In fact, if you find your life is always under attack, it means there is something worthwhile in you still. There is something about you that still God can work on. The Bible said, you and I, we must not just know that God has the power over death, but he wants us to know he has power over your trials, power over your difficulties, power over everything that besets you. Every communion service reminds us that it doesn't matter how buffeted and battered you've been. It doesn't matter matter how tough the journey has been hanging there God has power that you can overcome and so this morning I know that some of you have come through the storms of life some of you are still going through the storms of life I want you to know this morning that God can give you the power God can give you the grace to know him. When you know Jesus, 
when you get to know Jesus, everything else in this life loses its significance. I know today there are some of you here and some of you listening to me who have been through the storms of life. You have been to the gutter and back. I want you to know that you are still in the race. You haven't been out of the race. Through the power of God, he can keep you faithful. Paul said, my aim is to attain the resurrection from the dead. Our aim is glory. Our goal is eternity. And every communion service reminds us that not only Jesus had power over the death, not only power over his suffering, but folks, Jesus is coming again. And that's what every communion service points us back. But it also points us forward. We look back to the death of Jesus on the cross. We look back to what he has done, his sufferings. We look back at how far we've come, but we look forward to the glorious appearing of his soon return. Every communion service reminds us that we are nearing home. We are one communion service closer to the coming of Jesus. And I've got news for you this morning. It won't be long. It won't be long. One day, one day, when all your labors and trials are all, one day, when we look back over our lives, we will indeed declare it was worth serving Jesus. I want to encourage someone this morning. It doesn't matter what you're going through. I know some of you at home wishing you can be here. I want you to hang in there. I've got news for you just over the mountain in the promised land. We can see glimpses of the golden morning. I've got news for you that Jesus is coming again. And because of this, because of this hope we have, we can celebrate today. No matter what we are going through in the present, that God is still on our side. Today, I want to encourage someone. Let us reaffirm our commitment to looking forward to the soon coming of Jesus as we partake of the emblems of his humility. But most importantly, as we look forward to his imminent return. Today, it doesn't matter whether you are here or at home. God is giving someone an opportunity to get reconnected with him. God is giving someone an opportunity to partake of the emblems that reminds us that he still has the power over death, your sufferings, and all that will ever befall us. Father in heaven, this morning, may we count it our loss because we've known Jesus. Some people have had to give up a lot to serve you. Some people could have been making thousands, millions maybe, in the world. But they have left it all to serve you. Oh God, today, we know that while in the eyes of the world it may seem that we have lost out, in the reckoning of eternity, it will prove that we have gained everything. And so today, help us to see our lives from a heavenly point of view. May we look back at our life and declare all that I am and ever hope to be 
I owe it to Jesus. Amen. Amen.